can do better than that. I know it's early, but let's hear some noise, huh? Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Hey, my name's Asterios Kokodos. I am your moderator for this event. I'm a local stand-up comedian and a huge nerd. Like, maybe the biggest. I'm the kind of guy that, like, buys two copies of comic books. Like, one for reading, one for saving, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I just want to, you know, welcome you guys all here. Thank you guys so much for supporting uh, reading, comic books, literature. You guys are really cool. It's really cool to have you guys in the audience. Um, this is the anthologies panel. We're going to discuss comic book anthologies, you know, what it means to the, to the creators here. Everyone that's up here has written a comic book anthology. And so we're going to go from right to left. Uh, please say your name and then give us like the Hollywood pitch for your book. <laughs> Um, I, my name is Kazuki Boishi. I'm um, uh, I'm an artist and writer, but I'm also an editor uh, on a series of books called Flight. It's a comics anthology that comes out through Random House's uh, uh, The Lard Books division. And uh, I also put together a new anthology that's not out uh, called Explorer, and that's coming out through Abrams Comic Arts in March. Um, my books uh, tend to have uh, short stories by a lot of people who work in the film and film or animation industry. Um, some of the people do work in comics, but most of them tend to be uh, concept artists in the, uh, in the film industry. I, there were a bunch of friends of mine that I knew had stories to tell, and uh, I just basically gave them a uh, platform for that. Right. Yeah. Hi, I'm DJ Kirkbright. I'm uh, one of the editors for an anthology from Image Comics called Pop Gun. Um, and they're kind of like, we call them graphic mixtapes, so I was like the, uh, <laughs> it's like the pitch for it, I guess. But um, there's a collection of stories from up-and-comers and established comic artists. Just There's no theme, it's just kind of everybody doing what they want. And uh, stories range from like two pages to 20 pages. And um, yeah, just have a lot of fun. It's all about fun comics. Cool. Sure. Hi, my name is uh, Michael Woods. I edit an anthology called Outlaw Territory over at Image Comics. Uh, it's a Western anthology. We have a lot of uh, big name artists and writers. We've got some new artists and writers. It's, it's a great mix. I just find the best, oh, most talented people I can and just jam them in the book. That's it. Cool. You always want the most talented people you can find and then to jam them in a book. I find. I'm glad you didn't find the most untalented people <laughs> that you could. Good move, sir. That's why you work for Image Comics. Uh, Miss Six? Hi. Um, I do a womanthology, and I also went on a uh, spree to gather some of the most talented ladies in comics. And we are a do-it-yourself driven force in the uh, female industry of comics, and we wanted to give every woman a chance to just go forth and show what we could do as creators, not just as women, but for women. And so we've got an amazing selection of ladies together, and I'm very proud to be working with them. Yeah, well, hey, let's give, let's give a hand for all your anthology editors and writers here. Now, I want to start our discussion, and by the way, this will be a no-holds-barred discussion. West Hollywood Book Fair asked me to get you guys fighting like dogs. <laughs> That's specifically what they told me to. Honestly, I want this to be like Crossfire. Essentially, personal attacks, make fun of each other's shirts and hats. I really want to see some blood out here, guys. Well, hey, I want, I want to start with kind of an uneducated premise. Uh, it's uneducated because I came up with it. It seems to me that an anthology is, by definition, a harder sell as a graphic novel than a graphic novel that centers around a character. You know, like a character you can put on a t-shirt, like you can read a certain character for 20 or 30 years, you know? But an anthology is, you know, by definition, a more eclectic mix. So what is it that drew you guys to the anthology format over, let's say, like the single character story-driven or team story-driven format? Um, well, I actually spend most of my time on my own book, um, Amulet. I'm actually um, a writer, creator, writer, illustrator of a series uh, called Amulet from Scholastic, um, and this is basically what pays for a lot of the anthology work that I do. Um, the anthologies are really just a way to to form a community. I mean, I, I've met um, a lot of people who actually work with me on on these books, uh, on the Amulet books, um, through them. So in a way, they're uh, they're kind of like a loss leader in a way, you know, it's just a way to like cultivate talent. Um, so uh, I feel that the anthologies that do uh, do well these days, they, they just tend to be, um, uh, 
they're, they're kind of like a cultural event book. Like Womanthology was, uh, I, I think they, they raised a lot of money um, on because Kickstarter, people, right? On Kickstarter, yeah. because uh, people, I, I feel people felt that there was a need for more women comic artists. Actually, I got a, a, a Friends of Lulu, Lulu of the Year Award <laughs> for Flight. <laughs> Because half of the as artists as a dude, were, as a dude, nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, because, tough guess. because half half of the artists were were women. Unfortunately, over time um, with flight, I just kind of leave it open to our our group of people to decide if they want to do a comic or not. And a lot of the women ended up just ended up getting jobs. <laughs> You know, getting serious, a lot of the guys stuck around to do comics, but you know, unfortunately, we had less and less female creators. Uh, Explorer actually has uh, another 50 50 split. There's actually 50% of them are women creators um, that I think are better than the guys, actually. <laughs> yeah, those guys stink, am I right? Uh, yeah, the guys aren't as good. Boo, dudes. <laughs> well, what about the rest of you guys? Now, the anthology format, again, it's a more uncommon format. I can go out there and I can pick up like a collected Ultimate Spider Man, I know what that is right away. What is it about the anthology specifically that was like, I gotta do this? Well, in my case, I'm a huge Stephen King fan because I read both comics and novels, and I write horror, mostly. So I, he defined a short story as a kiss from a stranger in a dark alley. It's just basically, you're, when you write a novel, you're getting to know that person. When you're writing a short story, it is just a one-time adventure. It is an encounter that you're just never going to have a chance to do again. So when you have a whole collection of all those stories, that'll be one of the most exciting rides ever. And I just love anthologies for that reason, no matter what field they're in. Yeah, I mean, I love them. Uh, as a reader, I like them because I have sh short attention span. Well, I, I love books, too. I just, they take me forever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, what I really love is kind of, especially the, uh, the anthologies that are very eclectic, and you either through tone or genre, you just don't know what you're going to get. You know, like, uh, one minute there's like, ah, oh, it's a pretty funny story, and then there's some devastating, really dramatic story, and then there's a horror story and an action story. I really like that. I've been told that that is a hard sell, though. Um, like, everything that I like about... I, everything I like about Popcorn actually made it a hard sell. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what specifically? Like, what well, do you mean by that? Because it was very eclectic and it's kind of like, it's a little bit of everything by a little bit of everybody and you don't know what you're going to get. And to me, I'm like, oh, exciting. Um, but it is, yeah, I guess in a broader audience, it is kind of a hard sell. And in the end, it becomes more about having fun and, um, and yeah, meeting, like... Well, that, people want to know what they're going to buy. Yeah. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. You know, you, you can't uh, continue to ask people to buy a surprise. <laughs> well, no, there's, I mean, there's uh, well, this, so with the new anthology that we're doing, um, well, actually with Flight, I think everyone assumed that we were doing stories about Flight. Yeah, that's what And I think, yeah, so, and people, people felt like, oh, well, I want to read stories about flying, so I'll pick that up. Well, that was, that's a common misconception because I, I told them that they could just do whatever they wanted, but I was doing a story that had flying in it, and then a lot of people felt, followed my lead, and that's sort of how it, it felt like, um, one contained work. I mean, people call it a graphic novel, but it's not, you know? Um, which I think is interesting. Um, I do think anthologies would work if we if we still bought magazines. Yeah. And there was a magazine that came out every month with short stories that you eventually collected into a graphic novel. Um, the, the thing is, with um, it, graphic no uh, I think anthologies actually service the artists more than the readers. Oh, yeah. You know, um, the artist, for the artist, it's really, really difficult to do an all-in-one graphic novel by yourself. Most people can't do it. They can't find the time and the money, or they don't have the ability to create something that will sell on, in, a, in the mainstream market. So, in places like Japan or in France or, you know, where else, they, uh, anywhere else where comics culture is readily accepted in the mainstream, um, the, the serialized format tends to work. Um, on a monthly basis, you know. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I definitely just from personal experience. Yeah, you always see manga and you pick it up and it's like twenty different stories. Right. Do you, do you guys think that like the anthology is, you know, is there like more of an international? Like, like, do anthologies work better kind of on the global level than in than in the domestic market in America? Do we understand anthology? Do we do we regularly buy anthologies? You know. I don't. I don't think we regularly buy anthologies, but I. How do we grand. fix that? <laughs> How do we get Americans to buy more anthologies? Come on, the five of us up here, we can fix this, right? Figure it out. Uh, Sarah? Uh, no idea. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> you work in Image Comics. I don't know how to sell comics. Well, if you really think about it, the pamphlet comics are kind of like um, an exploded anthology, you know? Because people are buying monthly, or every week they're going to their comic store. If, if 
the main, American mainstream comics market, mainstream um, 